I quite like eating insects. I'm vegetarian, not for dogmatic reasons, but just because I don't like meat. But I do like these crickets and maggots and also the grasshoppers. They I usually take off the wings because they keep getting stuck between my teeth. I wouldn't mind if in the future we'd farm crickets instead of cows. And this isn't the only idea for future food that scientists have come up with. There's also 3D printed meat, mushrooms, algae and jellyfish, among other things. Let's have a look. Meat alternatives have made a lot of headlines in recent years. There are several reasons for this. One is that growing animals is much more energy intensive than growing plants. A lot of energy and carbon emissions could be saved if we stopped eating meat. According to a study from the University of Oxford, shifting to a vegan diet could cut food related greenhouse gas emissions by up to 70% globally. That'd be about 16% of the total, a really big chunk. We could even cut them by 100%. We just all need to stop eating. But it's not just about climate change. It's also about land use and independence. Many countries are looking into new food production methods, so they have to rely less on imports or because they're running out of space, especially in densely packed areas like Singapore. Insects are an obvious replacement for meat as a source of protein and fat. The idea isn't new, of course. People have eaten insects for thousands of years or millions, depending on your definition of papal. It's remained somewhat of a niche food because, for one thing, it's hard to come by with decent amounts, but also because wild insects might carry diseases and parasites. And I don't know if you've ever tried to wash a grasshopper, but it's not all that easy. That's why companies have looked into making insect farming cleaner and more efficient. They often don't just sell the entire insects, they make other food products from them, such as protein bars, oils or crisps. They sometimes also offer pet food. That said, I have noticed that insects aren't for everyone, so let's have a look at something closer to what you know and like lab-grown meat. The idea of growing a nice succulent chicken thigh in the laboratory has been around since at least the 1930s. In 1931, Winston Churchill even predicted that 50 years hence we shall escape the absurdity of growing a whole chicken to eat the breast or wing by growing these parts separately under a suitable medium. Synthetic meat is usually produced by first taking some muscle tissue from a living animal. The Muscle cells are then supplied with nutrients and grown into larger structures like muscle fibers and eventually chunks of meat. This process has been refined over the decades, but texture has remained somewhat of a problem. The Spanish company Cocius wants to fix that with 3D printing, which also helps create some relatively normal looking meats. This isn't the only problem with synthetic meat though. Another issue is to get the muscle fibers to integrate fat. This problem could be partly solved with yet another food alternative, mushrooms. If you're struggling with mental health problems or know someone who does, you might want to note down better help who've been sponsoring this video. I have a long history of mental health problems and I've been in therapy for many years. I know it can seem a little self-centered, but I found it to be useful to rationalize my problems and also to take some burden of friends and family. But if there's one thing I remember about it, it's how tedious it was to find a therapist. This is how BetterHelp provides, well, better help, and it's incredibly simple to use. First, you go to their site and best you use my link betterhelp.com slash Sabine. You answer a few questions and they'll match you to a professional therapist, usually within 48 hours. And you can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat or messaging, however you feel most comfortable. If you use my link betterhelp.com slash Sabine or enter my code during sign up, you'll get a discount on your first month. If you've been thinking about going to therapy for some time, you probably should. And today's the day to get started.
Mushrooms, or to use the more general scientific term fungi, have been around as meat replacements since the 1980s. The first was the British brand Quan, which is still around today. To produce it, one grows a tiny fungus under controlled conditions. The product has a high content of protein and fibre and a structure that resembles chicken breast if you don't think about it too much. Today, companies are still producing similar products, which are named mycoproteins. Mycarina is one such company. They have produced protein alternatives, but they've also developed a fat-like product that can be used to make synthetic meat juicier and tastier. Most dedicated meat eaters probably won't be convinced by this stuff, at least until now. But in the end, meat is just a particular arrangement of molecules and sooner or later, I'm sure, we'll find a way to produce it without actually growing and slaughtering an animal. An entirely different avenue is to just go for plants and make sure they grow quickly and efficiently. Algae farming, which includes a large variety of species, is the best example example for this approach. To be fair, they mostly look like slime, but many algae are high in fiber, proteins, carbohydrates, fats and vitamins, making them a very useful food source. Better still, they're very resilient and grow fast. I like seaweed salad and also dried algae and wouldn't mind seeing a larger variety of the stuff in the supermarket. I swear this video is not sponsored by the algae industry. But algae haven't been bred as much as other plants and scientists are still using genetic engineering to make the farming more efficient. Besides just eating the stuff fresh or dried, one can also process it to powder that can be added to soups or stews. Lastly, let's take a look at one of the more out there prospects for our future diets, jellyfish. They're not just a nuisance for fishermen or pretty decoration for fish tanks. Jellyfish are also considered a delicacy in China for their unique texture. In addition to having a nice crunchy bite, some species of jellyfish are also a low calorie source of protein and vitamins. What makes jellyfish so interesting as a meat replacement, however, is that they grow very quickly and can do so in small spaces, so they're ideal candidates for indoor farming. Once harvested, you can eat jellyfish or turn them into other edibles or use them to feed other animals. The biggest problem with all these food alternatives is at the moment that they're all too expensive to make much commercial sense. But I'm convinced that a hundred years or so from now, eating meat will be considered a rather uncivilized and mildly disgusting food choice. What will we eat instead? Well, in the end, there's always soil and green. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.